رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم عظيم السلام عليكم يا رسول الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to another Ramadan series so alhamdulillah 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 today we are going to be talking about a very very good topic a dear topic close to my heart and that is being good to your neighbors so i want you to ask yourself before i get on with this topic are you good to your neighbor are you on talking terms with your neighbor or have you got an outstanding court claim against them now given my legal background there were many muslims that i used to see taking their families their neighbors the next of kins everyone that you can possibly imagine to court over silly little petty little claims I call them silly, I call them petty, you can judge me if you want, but this is something that is so far away from the deen of Islam, this is not something which is encouraged. We're going to find out today that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encouraged us, has informed us to be good to even the neighbours, people that we don't even know. And this is me referring to those people who I've seen with my own eyes bringing claims against their own family, against their own blood. Sons are bringing claims against their mothers and their fathers and daughters are doing exactly the same. Mothers and fathers are doing that to their children. What kind of society and world are we living in? We need to make sure that we don't do this, brothers and sisters, because this is when we are going out of astaghfirullah, the fold of Islam. Everything that we have is going to be left in this dunya. Remember what I taught in the podcast? There's only one thing that's going to go with you, which is your amal nama, your book of deeds. If you've done good, alhamdulillah. If your bad deeds outweigh your good deeds, then you're only answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. So today's topic is the rights of neighbours, and hopefully if you are, um, one of those who are not on talking terms with your neighbours, please find it in you, within your heart, to knock on the door the month of Ramadan and obviously refraining from the two metre distance that we've got, the social distancing going on, knock on the door, step away and give them something. Give them something as a peace offering, as a token. Make some food in your house for iftar and knock on the door and maybe use this month of mercy to apologise. So please, please, please go ahead and do that today, alhamdulillah. So let's look at the Quranic ayah first. Um, it's a very long one, so I'm just going to use snippets from that Quranic ayah. Um, it's surah number 4, verse number 36. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Do good. Do good to the neighbour who is a stranger. Like I say, this Quranic ayah is quite a long one. It's obviously referring to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not joining anybody with him, being good to your parents, being good to orphans, being good to the people who are poor. And then obviously this ayah refers to being good to your neighbours, even if they may be a stranger. Sometimes we may feel and find, living in the Western uh, society, in the Western uh, world, that we've got neighbours who may not necessarily be Muslims. But that's okay. That's fine. You still have a right over them. The Quran is teaching you that even if they're strangers, you have to be good to them. Alhamdulillah, what have we been learning so far in the Ramadan series? It's not I, me, myself. There is no room for being selfish in Islam. If they are celebrating Christmas, you don't celebrate Christmas. There is no harm upon you in giving them a Christmas present. I know I do that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do that for my neighbours. We should all be in a position where we are living in a society which is, which is tolerable, which is just. Prophet Muhammad wasallam did not proclaim everyone to uh, be a Muslim when he, alhamdulillah, took ownership 
of Makkah before he came back, he said he built up a treaty and he gave rights to everyone, Muslims and non-Muslims. But it's us that have made these differences in the 21st century. Please, please, please find it within your hearts to remove these differences. And if you are in a position of um, astaghfirullah, of quarrelling with your neighbours, remove that today. Be the bigger person, alhamdulillah, and go and knock on the door. And the best month to give a peace offering of a bit of your iftar cooking. So let's look at the first hadith. Uh, Ibn Umar and Aisha and uh, reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Jibreel السلام, so that's Angel uh, Gabriel, kept recommending treating neighbours with kindness until I thought he would assign a share of his inheritance. Subhanallah. This is mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari and Sayyid Muslim. What this is referring to, it illustrates the importance of nice treatment of neighbours in Islam. This hadith is telling us that they were so nice, so nice, so nice, so nice in their treatment towards their neighbours that Hazrat Aisha Rizladalha and her even got scared that she would probably, he would probably end up giving a bit of his inheritance share because he's so nice, he looked out for the neighbours so much. But we don't do that. We really don't do that. We need to get ourselves in a position, alhamdulillah, where they are first and foremost. Because let's let's face it, sometimes we have family, our own blood, our mothers, our fathers, our own blood, brothers and sisters, they're so far away, they're in different cities, they're living away. But our neighbours will be the first if we're ever in a position of Allah that we've got some form of calamity upon us, they will be the first to come. They will be the first to knock on the door and say, do you want our help? So we should be that way in our character that they can, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah vouch for us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu actually specified and said, the neighbour is just not the person, the house next door to you on either side. It's actually 70 houses down the street. Alhamdulillah. So if you look at that, you can imagine that you need to be making sure you are on good talking terms with your whole street. Okay? We need to make sure, alhamdulillah, that we have such a persona about us, alhamdulillah, that our alhamdulillah neighbours are happy with us and we are happy with them. And can you see by doing that, we're hopefully, hopefully building a society of tolerance and of uh, spreading peace and love, inshallah. So let's look at another hadith. Abu Dhar, Rizal Anhu, reported that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, commanded me, O oh Abu Dhar, whenever you prepare a broth, put plenty of water in it, and give some of it to your neighbours. Subhanallah. This is quoted in Say Muslim. This is Hazur Baq saying, whenever you cook food, add a bit of water to it. So if you're making, say, some form of curry, and add a bit of water to it, just to make a bit more of a broth, so you can give more to, it'll be more, and you'll have enough to give and distribute to your neighbours also. How can we be those neighbours when we are sleeping with the belly full and our neighbours next door to us are sleeping on an empty stomach? This is more so fitting in this pandemic situation that we're in at the moment with the whole coronavirus. If we have elderly neighbours, just be kind, just knock on the door. You're going to go out to get your bread and butter. Why not ask them if they need the bread and butter? They may not even have the means of transport to drive to be able to go out and do their chores themselves. So if you're a means of that, alhamdulillah, just imagine the reward. And alhamdulillah, imagine doing that in Ramadan. Imagine the reward of that. Remember what Baji was saying? Everything's quadrupled like so many times more. This is the best month to be doing that. So let's look at a final hadith because I'm obviously aiming to keep these videos short and snappy because I want to obviously leave enough time for you to make du'a at the time of iftar um, and then obviously be helping around 
if any food cooking needs to be done with your parents do not leave your mothers in the kitchen alone to slave away themselves please please help because this is also sadaqa alhamdulillah Abu Huraira anhu, reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said He who believes in Allah and the last day, let him not harm his neighbour. And he who believes in Allah and the last day, let him show hospitality to his guest. And he who believes in Allah and the last day, let him speak good or remain silent. This is mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari and Sayyid Muslim. This tells us the faith, the Iman that we need to have. It's telling us the qualities we need to have. If we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, how can we say that and we're not being nice to our neighbours? How can we say that when we're talking gibberish all the time? How can we say that when somebody turns up to our house and we're rolling our eyes or the hair again? No. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us through this hadith of our mannerisms. We need to speak only if your silence is the words that you're going to speak are more beautiful than your silence. Only speak then. It's teaching us. But if a guest arrives at your house, alhamdulillah, let them be happy and content with the hospitality that you've offered them. It's telling us to be good to our neighbours. We need to ponder upon all these hadiths that I've mentioned today and ponder upon the Quranic ayahs. And like I said at the start of the video, if you are in a position where you're not on talking terms, please, 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 before even iftar today, make your food, knock on the door, and go give them some. Alhamdulillah. Remember by in your du'as. Do all your work and all your uh, good deeds that you do do. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let it be quadrupled even more so by doing that. And inshallah, inshallah. I'll see you tomorrow in another Ramadan series. Look after yourself. Allah Hafiz.